The Good News Bible Evaluated in 5 Minutes The Good News Bible, also known as the Good News Translation, was the work of a very important figure in 20th century Bible translation, Robert Bratcher. Dynamic equivalence was the term coined, I think by Bratcher himself, to describe the translation methods he used. His experience of translating the Bible in third world countries served him well when he turned his attention to a new translation in English. For example, he recognized the phrase from traditional English translations um, in Mark 1 4. You've got three nouns there baptism, repentance, and forgiveness. They're nouns which normally refer to things, objects, and so on, but here they are actually each referring to actions. So in many languages it might be better to actually use verbs which are supposed to be the ones for expressing actions. So we read in the Good News Bible, turn away from your sins and be baptized and God will forgive your sins. Also, um, as another Point. Short phrases are added to explain some actions. For example, Jacob tore his clothes, um, and they've added this phrase in sorrow to explain what this gesture was about. Here's another characteristic of the Good News Bible. Paul's brief but meaning laden phrase in Christ is expanded to in union with Christ. For example, in these places we see that. In the early days, the Good News Bible and its forerunner too, I think the TEV, today's English version, caused a huge storm by losing the blood. In other words, um, where the word blood appeared in literalistic translations, they used a different word to translate it. The simple fact is that the biblical word blood has an extended meaning here that the English word doesn't. Um, so I do a little rave there. Speaking normal English, we wouldn't say, for example, the blood of the soldiers saved us. This sounds like they donated to a blood bank. But we would say maybe we were saved by the soldiers sacrificing their lives. The Good News Bible translators recognize this, and in several places they use the translations death and sacrificial death, but they copped a lot of flack from people who had become attached to the old wording and didn't understand the issues. Here's another thing that I mentioned in previous videos, healed in that hour, which is better translated at that instant or that very moment. Leprosy, in the Good News Bible, it becomes a dreaded skin disease, recognizing that the leprosy referred to in the Bible, or what's given the name leprosy, was not the same as the modern um, illness. Here's a, here's a little um, random one, um, where it's better expressed in indirect speech. You can make up your own mind about that, but to me that's better. Here's chiasmus where the pattern is uh, see my your and then your mine that's called chiasmus but the good that's a characteristic of bible language but the good news bible has straightened it out my yours my yours um, jesus addressing mary magdalene a woman at the well as woman Gune, with the Greek behind it was acceptable form of address in Greek, but it's not in English. The translation falsely makes Jesus speak rudely. On the whole, though, I recommend the Good News Bible. However, the CEV, which I'll look at next, is similar in translation philosophy and overall does it better in my view.